Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed of God to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now I know you're waiting, all right? I know too. I'm waiting also to share these things with you. I can't wait. I, actually, I really can't wait. Praise God. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for the, our daily bread? Are you ready? Let's go. Praise God. Father, we thank you. And now make these declarations with me. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. Say this, say, every need in my life is expressly met today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now then, I was talking to you yesterday about Peter. Now remember, we, I read a scripture from Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15. Now we, we stopped in verse 16, verse 17, sorry. It says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So I was talking about the influence of the spirit in your life. So I said, sometimes there are demonic spirits that comes upon a man and causes the man to do certain things. And then I told you yesterday, but a man who walks in righteousness will hardly have this influence come upon him. But then I told you also, so that I don't go one way and, and, and lock it up without giving you the whole truth of the matter. I said, there are times God permits those the to a, a righteous man. There are times God can permit that action. Now, I want you to understand something. So that's what brought us to talking about Peter yesterday. If you didn't watch the broadcast yesterday, please go do watch it. Okay, I'm going to explain this, what I wanted to say earlier. I'm going to explain after I tell you the story of Peter so you understand. Now, in the case of Peter, I told you, God, knowing Peter, if he continued with this, his lifestyle, if he continued with this, his attitude where Jesus is concerned, on this journey of Jesus going to the cross, Peter was also going to end up on that cross with Jesus. Why? Because Peter, his nature, Peter was never a coward. There is no place in scripture you will find Peter acting as a coward. Never. He wasn't. Ne he was ne if Peter believes in a thing, his whole heart is in that thing. Praise God. That's Peter for you. That's Peter for you. He was never a coward. Now, because God knew this about him, and God had chosen him to be the one to carry out the ministry of the church after Jesus leaves. Yep. And say, how? Read your Bible. Anyway, let's leave that part there. Not because I can show it to you, but let's not deviate from what I'm saying. So God knew that Peter was going to destroy his life. So what did God do? God permitted Satan to interrupt Peter's journey. You remember Jesus in the book of Luke speaking to Peter, you know, when he was trying to tell them, look, this is the journey I'm going. And one day Jesus looked at Peter and said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for permission. And this is his intention. He said he has asked for permission to have you. And this is his intention, that he may sift you as wheat. And Jesus said, but I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. When you are converted, strengthen the brethren. Okay. One other time, Jesus was talking to the disciples and Peter said, Master, forget it. I will defend you with my life because I'm ready to lay down my life for you. And Jesus said, will you really lay down your life? Jesus, Peter said, of course I will. Now that's Peter for you. You need to have friends like Peter, praise God. And Jesus said to him, hey, Peter, before the cock crows, you are going to deny me three times. Now, when you read that, you will think Jesus was telling him, hey, you're fickle. I know you. Before the cock crows, I'm sure you would have denied me three times. No, that's not what Jesus was saying to him. 
You, you need the Spirit of God to help you understand these things. Jesus knew. Because, because listen, Jesus understood the journey he was going on. He understood it perfectly. He had prayed. He had seen through the whole thing. He's seen it. And so he knew every strategy Satan is going to pull on him. He knew. And then, so he said to Peter, before the cock crows. Now the crowing of the cock has to do with a timing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, Jesus could have actually said to Peter, Hey, Peter, before 10 minutes to 6 o'clock, you would have denied me three times. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, it was tied to a time. It was tied to the timing. And Jesus knew that through that night, three times, the devil is going to try to snatch Peter. Or rather, Peter was going to be given the opportunity, the, the temptation. He knew. So he told Peter beforehand, not to warn him. <laughs> you know, I've heard people say, Peter had prayed that night at the Garden of Gethsemane. He would not have denied Jesus. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You see, anyway, so God had already set the timing and God had given Satan his limits. So this was the instruction God gave to the devil. Devil, you've got Peter until the cock crows. Because you see, let me tell you something. Satan always comes three times before he leaves. It's, it's simple. That's his, that's his character. That's his, his way. If Satan tempts you the first time and you resisted the temptation, don't think he's done. Don't think he's done. He's coming again very soon. For that particular thing, he will tempt you three times. <laughs> Why three times? It's a spiritual principle. It's a spiritual principle. You see, <laughs> oh Lord, what are we going to, into today, Holy Spirit? Please help us. Listen. <laughs> you remember Jesus was tempted how many times? Three times. Now we see. <laughs> when Satan comes into your life, no matter how righteous you are, You see, there's something about three. Even God walks with three. Even God walks with three. After you've heard me say this before, that if God blesses a man, you will find the confirmation of the blessing in his third generation. Third generation is three. It's a principle. It's a spiritual principle. Why? I mean, even if you're playing a game, I mean, if you're playing a game of winning, maybe tennis or, or um, t tennis, badminton, um, you, you, you know, game that has to do with I win or you win, you, you realize that the, the, the principle of three comes into play. And now when they talk about the principle of three, they, they can do three best, three best games. So we're like, okay, so maybe there's a tie. Okay, now in that three best game, they're looking for who's gonna win twice. That's human now. But I'm telling you, there's a spiritual principle of three that is at work. So when Jesus said to Peter, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times because he knew Satan is going to exhaust his, his, his weapon on Peter before the cock crows. And it will take three for it to be concluded that he has lost. So, and then Jesus knew that after this temptation, it's going to be the time of accusation. See that now? 
And that's why Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. So he was given a liberty. Satan was given a liberty by God. Go, go deal with Peter. And he got there. And you know the story. Hey, I think I know you. You are one of his disciples. And Peter just found himself saying, without understanding what came over him, he found himself saying, no, I'm not one of his disciples. And you know the funny thing? John was standing right there with him. <laughs> Praise God. John was standing there. He said, no, I'm not one of his disciples. Okay. And then they were about to enter the judgment hall. Now that was, you see, that was where he would have been rounded up and probably arrested or killed. And the, the lady at the gate saw him and said, Ah, I know you. You are one of his disciples. That was the second one. And says, No, I'm not one of his disciples. Me, check me out. Have you seen me before? Have you seen me with that man before? And Peter was wondering, John, what has come over me? He couldn't explain what was going on. And then... The relative to the one that he caught his ear saw him. Now, John was writing this thing, so it was not, he was there when it happened. And he said, Surely you were at the garden with him when we came to arrest him. I know you, you were the one that. The Bible said, Peter began to swear. He began to swear. Now, Satan had exhausted, and the Bible said, immediately after that, the cock crew. Crew. Now that meant Satan, you have exhausted your timing over Peter's life. And now Peter was ashamed to go in further. See that now? And if he doesn't come in, then he will not find himself in that situation where he would have to defend Jesus. He, now the, the whole thing of guilt has already come upon him that he has denied this man. So how is he going to stand again to defend him? That was how Peter was separated from the judgment of Jesus. It was a heavily planned thing. He said, ah, you mean, yeah, that's true. God planned it. And that's why Jesus was never angry at Peter. That's why Jesus could still trust Peter with the church. You, he did. Say, so how did he trust Peter with the church? Oh, oh, on the day of Pentecost, who spoke up before the church? Peter did. When, when, when the disciples decided to go fishing and Jesus came back to them, who did Jesus hold responsible? Peter. When it was time for the word of God, the gospel to go to the Gentiles, who did God come to first? Peter. You remember the story of Cornelius? And that's what Jesus meant when he says, I will build my church. You are going to be the point man that is going to lead these people. That's what Jesus meant. Not because the whole church will now be depending solely on Peter. No, it's the Holy Ghost that is doing the work. But then he needed someone to use. And that's what Jesus was referring to. He was actually saying, Peter, you're going to be the leader. And that's what he meant. And believe this because it's the truth. Praise God. So, so I'm showing you this. And that's because Peter was a very principled person. He had stability of character. He did. Now, to such people, when God wants to do something and that their nature is going to obstruct the flow of God, God can look for a way to take them out of the way at that moment for his, uh, for his purpose to be achieved. Because sometimes your good character can somehow affects the flow of God's purpose. Say, what are you talking about? I'm telling you the truth. That's why the, um, um, Solomon spoke and, and says, I think that's in Ecclesiastics, I think. So he says, don't be over-righteous. You see, 
always submit your character, always submit your attitude, however good they are, to the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now imagine if Peter was that kind of a person that can receive the instruction, Peter, don't go out. Don't follow Jesus. Stay away from him for the next three days. Now, if Peter was that malleable, you understand what I mean? He, if he was that bendable, he, would, he wouldn't have been exposed to that demonic influence. He wouldn't have been exposed. Now, I'm sharing this with you to let you see that this is how life is. See, another story is the story of Job. Another story is the story of Ahab. God said, who would deceive Ahab so that he would go to war and go and die there? God initiated it and Satan was used to execute it. Praise God. Now, I'm sharing these things with you to know because tomorrow we're going to go into um, the essence of why I shared that scripture with you. But first of all, get this. There are demonic influences that come upon people to do certain things. And also, the Spirit of God comes upon people to do certain things. I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God. Have the best week ever. Now, don't be afraid. Satan is not about to influence you. That's why I'm teaching you these things. Praise God. But the Spirit of God is resting upon you even now. And He is causing you to fulfill His purpose and His will. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God.